welcome to the first ever episode of Revive Me Bro Games. I am uh, Silly Squirrel 11, and this is Master Rain. Hello, everybody. It's good to talk to you. We're basically two best friends that have been playing games for 15 plus years. And we decided that, you know, we wanted to share with everyone the beauties of co-op. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, we we've, we've been yeah, we've been having fun playing for a really long time now. You know, we're both we're both married guys and we both find the time to to play and to, you know, do what we can online. So this is just like the next step of like having just a ton more fun online with everything that we're doing. And, you know, we just want to share our experiences with, with, with you guys as we go on and, and as we go on this, these adventures of multiplayer games and there's so much coming out. <laughs> oh my God. Like I can't oh wait. Oh my God. I can't yes, wait. Yes. We've been playing co-op games since basically the Nintendo 64 days. And I think for every platform, we've at least played a game together. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Pretty at much. Least. And lately, our friend Master Rain here bought himself a uber-powerful computer. So now we can play Age of Empires 2 together. Yes, I have entered the Master Race as Master <laughs> Rain. <laughs> <laughs> It was a long time coming. Let me tell you guys. I had a all I ever had before this was a gaming laptop that had a whatever GPU in it. It was enough to run Team Fortress 2 back in like 2009. And that it was, was embarrassing. it. It was embarrassing. <laughs> and that was all I would do. And I think I got like maybe 15 frames per second on Dead Space. And I was having fun. So to have the, this beefy boy, ooh, it is nice. <laughs> yep. Coming back to Counter Strike. And like I said, Age of Empires 2 plus. Left 4 Dead 2 and all these other games. It's It feels like old times, right? It feels like old times. It's good to be back. <laughs> you know, this podcast today will be for us to introduce ourselves to y'all and to get a feel of who we are as we move forward with, you know, topics regarding co-op games, games that we're playing, games that are coming up uh, soon that people can play cooperatively. And of course, just your, you know, your regular multiplayer games, like I said, CSGO, your Modern Warfare and all that stuff. Yeah, we're excited to start some really awesome gaming adventures with you guys. And we're excited for you guys to get to know us. And we want to get to know you. And we want to start a community, just a general family of people that, you know, we want to love to play. We love playing with each other. And we want to play with you guys, too. And if we can start a great community of people where we can all have fun and be friends, then this is awesome. And that's exactly what, you know, this is what, what this is all about. Yep, exactly. I couldn't have said it better. So just so everyone gets a feel of who we are. We're going to name some of our all-time favorite games. Plus, in here on out, we will be mentioning what we're playing at the time. I'll start, if that's okay with you. That Mr. is Rain. cool. That is cool. All right. So um, I'm going to mention four of my all-time favorite games. First one that comes to mind is Metal Gear Solid 3, an absolute classic of stealth. Oh, yeah. It is one of the, honestly, one of those games that I can play it over and over again, and it will probably still make me cry. <laughs> uh, I tend to play it at least uh, once every every two years. And every oh, time yeah. I play it, it's like there's something new about it. There's something in the story that I got to appreciate more and more, especially now that I'm, uh, I'm uh, a lot older. The second is a little bit of a cheat. Uh, <laughs> I am adding a trilogy of games. All right. To, okay. To, to the list so it's the mass effect trilogy oh yeah good choice so uh i usually go for cinematic games a la hence why i picked metal gear solid oh yeah, but with, oh, yeah. with mass effect is one of those games where you know the first game the second game and the third game all are they're all so connected to how you play with your character that it really does feel like a unique experience oh and yeah. I mean, the first time around is just you know, having that sense of many years of of developing relationships in this game and and, you know, getting your character up to a certain level and, and seeing how the different stories will branch out and all that. It's it's, it's definitely oh, like I think I've been it. And I've the been, sex. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I may have wanted to bang half the crew, but that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's the alien's name? Varus Varric? Oh man, I was so close. I should have gone all the way with him. Wait. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Sorry, Varys? keep going. Keep going. What? 
<laughs> no, I forget his name. I forget his name. The one alien who's the friend of Shepard. Uh, so Garrus. Garrus. Not Varys. Garrus. Garrus, Garrus, was, like Ferris, Garrus was cool. Garrus was cool. Yeah, I can't believe I forgot his name. I'm terrible. <laughs> A fantastic trilogy of games. And I'm really, 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 really hoping that they released... A remastered version of the whole trilogy. Because my lord, I would give it another go. Oof, I would give it another yes, go. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, I mean, if they're gonna do Anthem two and fix it up and whatever, I mean, I mean, okay, okay. But yeah, if they can give us that, <laughs> whoo, yeah. No, dude. give me Mass Effect. Give, give us, Effect. give us a Mass Effect. Yeah. <laughs> All right, my third game is an oldie, and when I mean oldie, I mean oldie. You guys probably weren't even born oldie. Mm-hmm. And it is the Sega Genesis classic, Shining Force. Oh, yeah. Now, I won't go into detail, but imagine uh, Fire Emblem without the permadeath. That's basically the game. Uh, it's a wonderful RPG, very straightforward in terms of the story and the leveling and the characters. Like, it's not necessarily the most steepest of games, but when it came to playing an RPG, that was tactical but not overly complicated it just it just filled the void for me so i remember you playing that a lot yeah i spent a lot of hours i played the genesis version i played the pc version and i've played the game boy advance version which was pretty darn good uh, all things considered uh except for the stupid card uh, game mechanic it was weird it was weird (laughs) but whatever yeah yeah don't fix what's not broken yeah (laughs) yeah so yeah, Shining Force One and Shining Force One specifically, and also a little shout out to Shining Force Two. And finally, the fourth game uh, is considered one of the greatest games ever made, and it can be none other than Half Life, the original Half Life. Yes. Uh, yes. When it comes to PC gaming, you know, I always think about you know your Age of Empires, your Descent, you know, all these like uh, old school games like Doom. But man, someone says PC gaming, I immediately go to Half Life. Oh, like it, was, yeah. it was only available on PC for a long time. Later on, it was you know available on Console. PlayStation Two. But man, like talk about an almost perfect game and the expansions, mm, Opposing Force. Mwah. Oh yeah, I remember you talking about Opposing Force a lot in high school. <laughs> that and yeah, then, and you showed me that because like, I didn't have the computer yet. Yeah, everyone's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, just download the demo. Do you download the demo? Back when demos were a thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I would say those four games, uh, Metal Gear Solid 3, Mass Effect, Shining Force, and Half-Life are the f- one of my four all-time favorite games. Uh, Master Rain, please uh, share your list with uh, with me and the rest of our listeners. Oh, absolutely! And I'm actually to start off with, I'm actually wearing the shirt of one of my of the all time favorite, which is the Legend of Zelda. So I'm currently wearing Boy. the Triforce today. Yeah. So wait, wait, the, which the Ocarina, the Ocarina of Time specifically, because it first for what it really did, it's, it's above you know above zelda above like the name legend of zelda and all that stuff what it did for me was give me a real love for like adventure games and puzzle games and like taking the time to figure it out because i loved i i used to own the manual for ocarina time and i used to look at it every single day i would trace the 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 drawings i would trace the images it was so cool and i loved i loved everything about it but what i loved so much was that it just got me like into a new world it got me feeling like all right what would this hero do if he was really in the shadow temple and whatever and i remember as a kid i was like that was like the worst part i couldn't even go to where those big deads were like i would freak out now as an adult i'll go in there and i'm like face me it's just (laughs) nice you know it's just it's just like that that like that like adventure the hero kind of feeling that was Mm -hmm. that was like awesome at that time and and at the time i had been playing like donkey kong racing and like Mm -hmm. yeah a couple other little games like 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 some soccer games and like the nfl games that were coming out at the time for the n64 (laughs) so so when zelda came out i didn't know anything about zelda i didn't know really much about adventure games and i played it and i was hooked and like majora's mask blew my mind and and it's just everything that's everything about the, the the story just like the creation the art i love it i love it love it love it so much absolutely so much Remember the the Master Quest was it called back in the Game Boy? Oh the game, yeah, GameCube days. The GameCube days, yeah, dude, that was awesome. The harder version of it, yeah, it was so much cool. It almost made the Water Temple impossible because it's like <laughs> it almost felt like you were missing a key. But but you could figure it out. Every time mm-hmm. I played that that one, they always feel like I've, I I leave the Water Temple incomplete. 
fun. Dude, Aside fuck from the fun. <laughs> Aside from all that, oh yeah, it's awesome. Like getting the, the big Gorgon sword and everything. Oh, dude, awesome, awesome. Uh, um, good choice, my man. Good choice. Oh yeah, my number two. It's gonna be it's gonna be Halo Combat Evolved. Huh. Definitely n- m- number one though, because <laughs> uh, two reasons. It was one of the first games that I would play multiplayer with my cousins and my friends to where we would play for hours. Yeah, like yeah. what was the one level called the library where you fight the flood and, and, and the guilty spark is like leading the way or whatever. And like, that, I feel like that one like lasted, like it could last a really long time. And it was so fun just going through and blasting these zombie things with my cousins. And we're just like, I never even owned an Xbox. Like this is still on my list and I never owned an Xbox mainly because like it's, it was that experience that co-op experience of going through the game with somebody else and just like blasting those enemies to that that pve experience was so good and a character of master chief like the, the suit he's wearing the lore behind it i mean come yeah, on yeah dude, dude you, iconic iconic and you got me into the books too like don't forget that <laughs> yes. you got me into into the the reach book like i never knew about all that kind of stuff and and reading that was like mind-blowing to like know that there's all this deepness to the lore and replaying halo one and just thinking about what where master chief is coming exactly. from and what yeah. happened yeah. and what happened in reach dude it just it just adds so much more to the game and then playing it by myself that when i actually had a computer to pl- that could play games halo was was a game that i would play over and over and over and over again because i didn't have internet i didn't have i didn't have much at the time um but I played that so much. I would, I would play. I would. I would listen to Lincoln Park and just go through the game over and over and over, like on the hardest difficulties. And it was so awesome. Oh gosh, dude! Like I, I can totally see you. Like it's playing like all by myself by Lincoln Park while you're like shooting some. Some yes yes <laughs> which if you remember i ended up making some lincoln park a, a one lincoln park halo video for halo 3 well oh maybe maybe God. if i can d- dig it up we'll we'll post it to the site <laughs> yeah no i'll, I'll but, dig up my old halo dvc <laughs> yes dude yeah but halo iconic iconic to what it did to the shooters which leads me on to my next point which is call of duty which sadly we were just discussing how we're probably going to skip the new call of duty for for very yeah. very many personal reasons reasons game gamer reasons specific, yeah yeah right? i mean if you guys want to know just hit us up in the comments and we're gl- more than happy to go into detail on why oh, we're yeah. probably not gonna buy the newest one yeah and if you want a whole video on it we'll discuss it there's a lot of reasons why i think i think what i think with call of duty and the companies behind them i think they're working hard and for that i applaud them so my number three is going to be uh, it's going to be a Call of Duty slash Battlefield. That's what I'm going to say. It's going to be like this arcade military shooter. They've always been a staple. They've always been a favor. I've always owned a military arcade shooter where I just go in, just have fun, get blasted, get wrecked. It's okay. I know I'm not that great at those games, but I still go in because that's part of the fun with those games. There's something so stress relieving when you go into a very high intensity, high stress match, when there's all these snipers around and shotgunners and there's running around and these guys are no scoping <laughs> you up with the sniper. And yeah, after a full day yep. of work and you're trying to relax, it, it kind of gets under your skin, right? But that's part of the fun. Like that's part of the experience. And so there's something about that, that like, yeah, it kind of, pisses me off sometimes when i get wrecked in the round but there's always that part of me like i gotta try harder and it's always so gratifying when you try harder or you just go into the ultra instinct mode and you get the headshot on top of headshot on top of headshot and you win and you're in the top three and you're like yes feels so good you know like it almost makes you don't like you you don't want to stop playing the game because it felt so good and then like like a game like battlefield because you can't really do this in call of duty but battlefield when you can snipe across the map Mm -hmm. oh my god that is that is one of my favorite things to do is to get good with the sniper in battlefield learn how to use it go across the map and then just get those headshots that is probably the most stress relieving thing i can do in gaming is to get those sniper headshots not the I'm talking about the ones where you're there tactically, you watch the bullet fall and it hits him in the head. <sighs> like butter, you know? 
Sadly, I am getting Battlefield 1 vibes right now. <laughs> yes! Yes! Oh, do we have a lot to say about Battlefield 1. We'll, we'll uh, get to that. We'll get, we'll get, to, get that. to that. We'll get to that. And then my last game here is going to be Minecraft. And wow. Minecraft... Interesting choice. It, okay. Exactly. Yeah, interesting choice. It's a newer game. Um, but there's something so special about Minecraft. And it's that my wife and I have binged this game so much. I don't even know how many hours we've poured into it at this point. But we have created so many worlds and so many villages and we love to go in and and use the potion of uh the, the golden apple and uh what's it called potion i forget what the potion is called right now the top I, of my i'm head. sadly i'm not too versed with my <laughs> yeah. i've only played it a couple but, times in my life oh uh, yeah but i love going in and rescuing the zombie villagers and converting them back into zo- into villagers and then creating a massive <laughs> converting, village. converting them back into zombies <laughs> it's just zombies yeah converting them back into villagers <laughs> And then uh, we create these massive villages. Like we tried to create the hit, the hidden Lee village from from Naruto. We had this massive cliffside, and we had this humongous village with like thirty different NPCs in there. And we were trading. Like this village was like booming for a while there, and it was it was awesome. And every update that we get, we always try to new, do a, a new game so we can get the new updates. Like when the pandas came out. Like I, I, you obviously don't know about this, but they added pandas to Minecraft, and we were like, oh my god. Pandas and it, it's Minecraft is one of those games where it's very simple, you know, very basic, but the idea and the content in there is just so great. And one of my favorite things about Minecraft, not only not only is it a game that I can play with my wife and that we can both just play for hours and have a ton of fun with, there's there's a there's a very creative aspect to it, which it just gets your brain juices going. So one of the missions that I created was a automatic automatic sugar cane machine, to where it would automatically mine sugar cane for me. So I would just just go to a chest, and there would be hundreds of sugar cane there, and I would use it for for sugar. I would use it for paper, or whatever I needed, right? Um, and 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 I created that machine. I ne- I didn't look on on a review, or I didn't go on YouTube. I didn't see anybody who had created it, even though I'm sure there's people who have created it. It just hit me. I was playing the game, and I was like, "Aaron, I bet I can create this thing!" Like, "Oh my god!" Like, "This is we got. I got. I got to try. I got to try it." And she was like in the middle of a. She was like mining diamond, and she was like like deep underground. And she's like, "Well, I'm not coming up. Go for it." <laughs> <laughs> and so it was. It like that is so much fun. And since we're playing on the same screen, or sometimes we'll play like split screen or like two screens. I mean. Um, we're in the same room. We're vibing off each other. It's just a ton of fun. And and I know a lot of married guys out there wish that, that their wives would play more games with them. So to yeah. have a game that I can play oh, for yeah. hours and hours and hours with my wife, it is so much fun. And in fact, we're going we're modding Minecraft right now and we're gonna create some really special worlds. So I'm excited to share some of that with you guys as well. But yeah, those were my top four right there. Also, if I may make a suggestion for all the guys who want their wives to play games. Castle Crashers and Overcooked are a very good option. Ooh, Overcooked, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Although, granted, with Overcooked, prepare to fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gonna it's gonna flex your gonna your happen. marriage muscle, but you know what? It'll it'll make you closer. <laughs> it will make it will make you into better communicators. <laughs> it, you'll be forced to, or else you won't pass. <laughs> so as you can see, Master Rain and I, we have a quite the variety of games that we play. Um, they're also pretty different in terms of genres, but you know, now and then him and I come together and decide to kick it uh, by either playing a co-op game of our choosing, you know, or that's either story driven or just simply, you know, run and gun or whatever. Uh, so like, you know, I, I, I kept thinking like some of the games that come to mind that you and I have played together. Have yeah. Been like, you know, Gears of War. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So we also like we've also played Perfect Dark a lot. That was a that was a Ooh. big one back in the day. Smash Bros. Like who didn't, right? I mean, uh, yeah, exactly. Right. Mario Strikers. <laughs> that was a that was a funny one. That was crazy. That was intense. <laughs> that was intense. Um, we played Fantasy Star Online in the GameCube quite a bit, actually. We got pretty we far. And I don't remember much like of it, hours. but we got far there. It was weird. Uh yeah, we, we easily put in like a around 30 hours like uh yeah and the only way you could play this is by going to someone's house you know so it was 30 hours of master rain and i going like hey you coming over yeah bring fantasy star (laughs) (laughs) exactly exactly which also gauntlet was exact same way we went through the gauntlet all dude we did it we fought that level 30 witch dude (laughs) 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Anyways, uh, Model yeah, Warfare. Speaks, speaks, speaking, speaking of Gauntlet, just a shout out to Dro for show. Level 20, bitch. He will know exactly what we're talking about. <laughs> then uh, there's Modern Warfare 2, which is like iconic again, of course. That one was an extremely fun one. Mm -hmm. Battlefield, yeah, man. Mm -hmm. We got some stories on Battlefield. And then there's Monster Hunter, which one of our friends got us into Monster Hunter. And that was a mutual friend of both of ours. And, and that was awesome. But but yeah, that's that. those are some of the games, man. Those are, that's a good list right there. <laughs> yeah. Like, some of our favorites. Of some of the games that always come into mind whenever I think of you and I playing co-op is like Kanan Lynch. <laughs> if, if anyone's heard of Kanan Lynch, it's a very obscure Eidos interactive game that not a lot of people played, but by God, it was such a fun co-op experience. <laughs> it was wild. It, it was it wild. It was wild. Yeah, it was one of those co-op experiences that just leaves your mouth kind of open like, what is going on right now? <laughs> like, it's not the best game. It's not the best shooter. But whenever you, if you play it with a good friend, that game will stay with you. Yeah. <laughs> it will stay with you. Uh, but yeah, you know, hopefully we get to build more memories with uh, you guys. Um, you know, mention, like I said, we mentioned a lot of the games that are more current that we are planning on playing. And yeah, like Ray said, we just want to get a community, get together, play more co-op games, talk about games. And uh, it's, it's really what we're passionate about. Just uh, playing yeah. with other people. Yeah. Now, Silly, before we leave off today, I'm curious, Tell if you can tell everybody, what is a game that you're playing right now that you're binging or whatever? Right now, I am knee deep into Ghost of Tsushima. Ooh, yeah. And as most of y'all know, guess what just became available a couple days ago? Legends. <laughs> yep. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima released a story mode co-op game. Or I guess co-op mode for Ghost of Tsushima, which Master Rain and I will definitely be playing sometime soon. Which is funny because I just got my PC and I'm like, well, dusting off the PS4. Like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So Ghost of Tsushima Pro Evolution Soccer 2020. The soccer is the bane of my existence. And as much as I like FIFA. Pez is the way to go. Sorry, guys. Mm. Pez is the mm -hmm. way to go. Pez is the way to go. And finally, some CSGO. And I probably play CSGO at least five times a week, sometimes even every day. But it's one oh, of those nice. games I just cannot get enough about. Even after 15 oh, yeah. years of playing the damn thing. <laughs> it is. It's a classic. It's a classic. It's one of those, one of those games. Uh, what about um, you, Ray? Yeah, yeah. So I am currently uh, on, on that Japanese vibe. I'm currently playing Nier Automata, you guys. That game, dude, it is. It, I, I played it once through already. I'm in my second playthrough, and it's already kind of like made me tear up. Like, I'm like, oh, why does dude. this have to happen in this game? Oh, man. Dude, but I gave I, away my copy. Oh, oh my gosh. It, it it really is making me kind of like feel. <laughs> Let's just put it like that. It's making me feel. Uh, Ace Combat. I played a lot of Ace Combat. I love a good jet fighting game. Ooh. Love, love, see, love. I can't do that. I can't. <laughs> oh, I, see, I, I got to go into these like ultra instinct kind of modes where like you're playing something super fast and like every little movement counts and whatever. And some of the bosses in that game were honestly incredible, like incredible boss fights. I was like yes <laughs> well, I'm gonna have to uh, take your word for it <laughs> <laughs> yep yep uh another one i'm playing right now is remnant i know it's a multiplayer game but i'm currently trying to solo that thing and it's extreme amounts of fun um died a couple times but i'm doing pretty well i i, I looked up a couple youtube videos to like help me out to get the good armor but other than that <laughs> i'm also playing drone it's an early access game on steam um it's super fun if you ever see a master rain who's just blasting you that's me and then the last thing that I'm going to mention, I, well, Cyberpunk. When Cyberpunk comes out, y'all, I'm going in it, in it. But the last thing I'm trying to do is get good at CSGO. I'm serious, you guys. I'm trying to get good at CSGO. I'm trying to rank up there. I'm not trying to, like, get on and get wrecked. Like, I'm trying to get good at CSGO. I own a good computer now. I can actually a do it. A lot of lost time, my man. A lot of a lost time. A lot of lost time. But watch me do it. And if y'all ever want to watch a live stream of me getting on CSGO getting good, y'all can watch. 
that's going to be it for us today. You know, uh, we'll definitely come back soon with uh, more topics. Yeah, you guys, much love. Thank you for listening. Uh, we're excited to talk to you guys again soon. We're excited to to play some games with you guys and have some laughs, have some fun, uh, shoot some enemies, shoot some zombies, and up until next time, everyone. And, yep, and if you want to contact us or like some more of our stuff, follow us at Revive Me Bro Games on Instagram, Revive Me Bro Games on Twitter, and the podcast will be available on all platforms, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify Podcasts. We're looking forward to hanging out. Anyway, till the next episode, guys. Take care.